We will have um, our regular business meeting followed by a budget workshop this evening. Could we all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Um, thank you everyone for coming. I see we have um, a lot of students out there and we're looking forward to hearing from you um, later this evening. Uh, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? We do not. Okay. Um, we do have one announcement, which is I would like to wish a happy birthday to Reed Dowdy, who is 18 tonight. <laughs> And um, chose to be with us um, as opposed to Hugo's restaurant. Um, and his mother uh, dropped off some cupcakes for us to have a little later, which is very sweet of her. Uh, and Reed, can you tell us what the first thing that you did today was? After Registered to vote. <laughs> good for you. Right. Very good. This kid's too good to be true. I know. Well, happy birthday, and thank you for being with us. It's an honor um, to share this day with you. Um, all right, so we will move on to approval of the school board minutes um, from Tuesday, February 8th. Do I have a motion? A motion to approve the school board minutes as written for February 8th, 2011. Do I have a second? I second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Okay. Seven zero. Okay, um, comments by student representatives. Do we have anyone from Pond Cove, or do you want to speak to anything in Pond Cove? No? Um, uh, we did the middle school last week. Uh, Reed and Matt, anything going on? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, third quarter's winding down for the high school. Ends March 25th, I believe. So kids are starting to finally concentrate and try to get whatever they're missing in. Um, winter sports season's finally done. We'll hear about that later, but definitely a great season for everyone involved. A lot of good results and uh, great times. And the one act runs this week for the high school theater. So if you haven't seen it yet, definitely worth checking out. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, the jazz bands at the high school, the concert jazz band and the number one combo went to Berkeley last Saturday. And the concert jazz band received an honorable mention in the category, which is a fourth place. Mm -hmm. um, the play, which Matt was talking about, Find Me, um, is going through one act regionals on Saturday. If they're successful in that venture, then they'll continue on to the states. Mm -hmm. um, spring season is starting to begin, as Matt explained. And lastly, um, there's a high school band and choral concert on March 17th that uh, the band's been preparing for. March 17th. Do you know, is that in the evening at like 7 o'clock or so? Okay, that's great. Um, the one act, do you know where the, the regionals are? Does anyone know? Mr. Westbrook, I think. Is it Westbrook? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm sure that will be on the website for people who are interested. Um, thank you. Um, do we have any comments from the public on agenda items? None? All right, so we'll move on to number five, communications. I see we have several retirements. Yeah, I'm trying not to take this personal, but <laughs> since I've arrived, these letters of retirement have been smiling in, I know. <laughs> but tonight's group of retirement letters are Judith Ferrente. She has over 25 years <clears throat> experience with us at Pond Cove. Uh, Conrad Barthium, who has 13 years experience with us at the middle school. Elaine Brunel, our high school math teacher, she has over 20 years experience with us. Um, and Margaret Welch, uh, who has over 23 years experience with us. And a bus driver, Ray Michaud. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's the last list of retirement letters that I bring to you. Can I ask one question? Mm -hmm. Is Elaine gonna continue in the Achievement Center or is she going into full retirement? 
Well, I just want to say for Elaine Brunel, uh, she's taught my son math for two years now, and I, I can't think of a finer teacher I've ever met since I was in first grade through law school. She's just an absolutely wonderful teacher and a wonderful lady. Thank you. Any other comments or questions around the retirement? Okay. So um, I'd like to give a quick update on the superintendent search process. Uh, as some of you may know, the search closed on the 25th of February. Uh, we wound up with 15 candidates from nine states, which we considered to be um, a pretty healthy number given the economic climate. Um, and so those applications were taken to our Credentials Review Committee, which we talked about in the last meeting. Uh, the Credentials Review Committee, which was made up of um, teachers, um, district leadership team, community members, um, and school board members met for several hours on Saturday um, to review the credentials. And I'd like to thank the individual members of that team for giving their time. Um, Michael Moore, Sarah Lennon, Dominic DePatsy, Jeff Shedd, Dwight Ely, Lynn Spadinger, Gail Rice, Sandra Sinclair, Laura Lee Scheidel, and Bill Marshall were all part of that team. Um, and it was a tremendous team, very um, experienced, um, uh, very high quality um, level of work done. Uh, so the board met last night to review that information, and, and we have several candidates to interview. Those interviews will begin happening in the next seven to ten days. And I would expect, hope for, an announcement mid-April. Um, I'm sorry to say there was one application that we did not receive, the gentleman to my right, but... Uh, we did receive many um, wonderful applications, and we're looking forward to interviewing people. So that is the update process, or the process update as of now. I will keep people informed as we move along. Um, so now we'd like to move on to athletics. Uh, and Before you do, <coughs> if the gentleman on your right would just say, <laughs> if he was going to do another superintendency, it would be delighted to do it in this community. It's a terrific community, and um, I would love, if I was seven to ten years younger, to be at the head of the line of the application pool. So, just wanted to clarify that. Okay. <laughs> I tossed that to you without telling you I was going to mention it. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so we will move on to athletics now. Um, and we had a wonderful winter season in athletics. Uh, and Jeff, do you want to introduce your, your group? So generally in the past what I've done is at the end of each season kind of provide a small glimpse of some highlights and accomplishments and um, after I was boasting at our last budget meeting, I thought it would be a great idea if you could hear it directly. Uh, from our students, so um, I'm very pleased to um, introduce our captains and team representatives from our winter athletic programs. Um, they're just going to give, they've been instructed to give just a brief um, season summary of their accomplishments, and, uh, and I have a couple thank yous, but I'll do that after. So I'll turn it over to, oh, out of order. Okay. Vinny. Hello, I'm Vinny Delphilo, one of the captains for the Cape Elizabeth Boys ice hockey team. Um, regular season, we finished 13-5, and five, which landed us third place in Western Class B. And we started off 0-3 and, and had a turning point in a game versus Chevres, where we won technically 5-4, but a penalty was called after time had expired, and they got a penalty shot scored, won it in overtime. And after that, our team really turned our season around and went 13-2 and in our last 15 games, including two five-game win streaks. And we had two, three big victories in that span, one over Greeley, which was the first time we beat them in the regular season the last five years, and two overtime victories versus Kennebunk and Winslow 
the Kennebunk game we scored with five seconds left in overtime. In Winslow, we came back from 4-1 in the third period. Um, we got knocked out in the first round in the playoffs by York. It's a 5-1 game, tough battle. Um, some highlights of the season, myself and another teammate, Nick Breed, were appointed Player of the Month of November and February. And uh, I guess our inspir inspirational moment was against Greeley. We had a lot of players step up, take a big role in that, and say a lot of things in the locker room, on the ice, keep us going. We eventually got that win 4-3. Uh, I just want to say thank you to the coaches and players, especially Barrett Heisen, who was our assistant coach, but left and went back to Alaska to work on an oil rig to help support his family. But we missed him. He was definitely a good figure for us. Gave a lot of nice speeches in the locker room during our winter break in that tournament. And I think that's about it covering hockey. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Jack Barber, and I was one of the uh, Alpine ski team captains. And um, this was really a monumental winter for us. Um, in past years, we really, we didn't, I mean, in past years, we didn't have enough uh, ski racers to even qualify for states, and we us we typically got last or second to last in most of the, most of our races. So um, this year, the men, uh, the Capels of Men, uh, won their first race ever, and in states we finished fourth, um, as well as two of our ski racers finished in the top ten in the state, and um, actually one is uh, qualified second for the main skates. Uh, main ski state team. So he'll be actually skiing next weekend. Um, his name's Sam Barber. Um, but besides all the accomplishments we've, we've achieved this year, um, it's really, our, our, our Coach Garrett and Coach Kintai have really created an awesome environment for, and everyone feels comfortable. We all have fun. I look at all these other teams and they're, everyone's getting so intense and everyone's so worried about their runs and we're able to joke around at the start. And we just have a we just have a great time, and um, the best part is that this team's only going to get better. Um, I think they're going to be probably top three in the state in Class B next year. So um, I just want to thank them for a great four years, and um, that's it. Thank you. Hi, I'm um, Jack Queenie. I was a captain for the indoor track team this year. Um, this was a good year. We were competitive. We were in a lot of meets. Um, we didn't win any, but we came close, which is great considering that we had a lot of new faces. We had almost 80 kids, which is, uh, I think it's a record turnout. So that was really good. Uh, lots of new people doing different events, just getting a feel for indoor track. So hopefully next year the team will be stronger uh, with that experience. <laughs> we had a really good time throughout the season. Um, even though we didn't win any meets, we still um, we're always in them, and people always were able to laugh and have a good time. So that was a lot of fun. Um, for states, at the end of the year, I think we had 10 kids qualify. Uh, most of them were girls for with distance, which is great for them. And a few went on to the New England meets, I believe. And I'd just like to thank Mr. Worthley, the head coach, Ms. Ward, assistant coach, um, Coach Eliza, the distance coach, and Coach Marles the throwing coach, and then also the boosters. They funded new blocks, um, new shots, and new um, batons for relay. So that was great. It really helped the kids practice their starts, throwing, and handoff. So that was um, a great help. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Hi. <laughs> I'm Lindsay Rand. I'm Paul Wenberg. I'm Abby Armstrong. We're from the um, swim team, swim and dive team. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'd like to start. Uh, okay. Well, the girls' team, um, we got a bunch of new swimmers this year, which is great, um, and every, and all a bunch of them wanted to qualify, and a lot of them achieved that goal. And we had a bunch of girls going to the state meet, um, and throughout the season, um, there's a ton of growth. Um, girls were dropping up to about 30 seconds in some races. Um, it was really great and a lot of different strokes were being uh, practiced and everyone was just growing very well and um, 
throughout the season, we kept a pretty even record for meets, which was good. And at Southwesterns, which is our second biggest meet, right before states, um, we got third, which was really good for us, and we were happy with that. And Oh yeah, we had a really great state meet. Um, we had, I think, 14 swimmers and divers qualify, which was um, really impressive uh, for us. And um, we had a lot of great relay and individual swims, so um, that was really good. We were all really proud of our teammates, and um, we performed very well. And the guys' swim team, we started off the season not really knowing what to expect. A lot of new faces. A couple of new seniors came out for the team this year, and two of them ended up qualifying, and one of them ended up swimming on the school record relay that we set this year. And um, we, yeah, we had great swims all year long and finished with a second place uh, finish in a state meet. Marcus Collier won swimmer the meet, and we won five out of 12 races at the state meet. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, yeah, so we'd really like to thank um, our coaches, Ben Raymond, and our assistant coach, Dave Croft, and uh, Mr. Thorak for working so hard to get us um, good pool hours and, um, and our boosters and parents. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Paul. Yes. Um, which relay did you guys break? Uh, the 200 free record. Nice. Took down Dave Croft, our coach. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Hi, I'm Emily Holliday from the girls' ice hockey team. I'm Kelsey Jackson. And I'm Mary Kate Marr. And so, if you don't know, the girls' hockey has merged with Wayne Fleet two years ago, three, three years ago, mm -hmm. officially, but we've always had um, a small relationship with them. So, um, one of the, I think, best things about the team is being able to meet girls from Wayne Fleet and connecting with them with, throughout the season. Um, our record this year was 5-13, and 13, um, even though it wasn't a really shining record, but we had a few turning points and some memorable games. Um, we had often moments where we came back, and one of our best games was against Lewiston, and we were down 2-4. to 4-0. To oh, 4-0. Um, and came back to win 6-4. to four. And another great game was near the end of the season, we were playing Gorham. They had never won a game, and they were up... 2-2-0 two, two, going into the third period, and in the last period we got two goals to tie it, and in the last two minutes we got two more goals to win the game. Mm -hmm. And we um, have three players that were named for the All-Conference League. Um, Kelsey was one of them with an honorable mention, and Roz Gray-Bauer and Hannah Deneen are on the first team. Um, and Mary-Kate and I, myself played in the Senior All-Star game last Saturday. Um, and one other thing is we were able to form a better relationship with, or I guess, um, with younger girls starting to play ice hockey and with the community. We had a, in December, um, we had an open night for um, girls to come out and skate and um, a lot of middle school girls were there and we were playing hockey and then that was followed by an alumni game. Um, and we also had a really successful spaghetti dinner, which we've had every year since I can remember. So, And we'd like to thank um, Kevin Deneen for all his help this year. Um, he helped some of our practices and helped coach us throughout the season, as well as our coach and our parents and our boosters. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Maddie Pierce. Uh, Sam Donnelly. I'm Max Gore. I'm Rob West. And uh, we're here tonight in place of the captains, uh, three seniors, Joey Doan, Cam Brown, and Theo Bovey, because they all are actually participating in a senior all-star game at SMCC. So that's a great accomplishment. Um, our basketball team ended up going 17-5 and five this year, 14-4 and four in the regular season. Um, as many of you know, we played last Friday for the state championship. Uh, we fell to Camden Hills, who was a great team, and we were really happy to get there. Um, and uh, I'd say we showed a lot of growth during the year because um, we were 3-0, and and we played Yarmouth at home. And I don't know if any uh, of the people there were here that night, there that night, but uh, we lost by like 25. They, they really smoked us. But then... Um, 
Uh, second to last regular season game in the year, we beat them by 20 out there, which was awesome. And we were really, really excited going into the playoffs because we knew we had basically, we were pretty close to our full potential. Um, another great uh, sign of our growth, growth was uh, we lost to York twice in the regular season and we only played him twice, but then we beat him in the Western Maine semifinals to be able to play in the Western Maine finals and win that and go to the state tournament. So we, uh, we definitely came together as a team, and uh, I had a great time. Definitely. And uh, I think it's important to note that without uh, Coach Ray's efforts, um, we would not have gotten to the point that we were at uh, in the position to play for a championship game um, last week um, because his dedication um, to the program is just incredible and the way he, um, from our practices to uh, studying film um, and even helping out in the community um, with our Saturday morning program where we uh, teach uh, third, fourth, fifth and sixth grade players basketball. Um, that's a really good way for us to give back and to uh, prepare the next generations of capers, of capers coming up through the program. Um, and so we definitely want to thank Coach Ray for his efforts. Um, our assistant coaches, uh, Coach Aaron Spalding and Coach uh, Mitch Ouellette. And uh, finally, we'd like to thank the boosters and all the fans who showed so much support for us, uh, especially throughout the playoffs. Um, last week, I don't know if you guys saw on TV, but the uh, fan, fan section was incredible. Um, and I think we had, uh, I mean, we must have had half the school there uh, cheering us on, plus parents. So it was just great to see all that support. Uh, yeah, Max pretty much covered, Max and Maddie pretty much covered everything. But we'd also like to thank, as juniors, we'd like to thank Theo, Joey, and Cam for their unbelievable leadership uh, towards us and the team. Without them, I guess, we wouldn't have been as close as we were. And uh, I'd say our team's inspirational moment and was, even though it's kind of hard to say, was the last game and how hard we played and how tough, how tough we played throughout the entire game. And even though they were bigger than us and stronger than us and on paper they were going to beat us by a ton, we continued to fight and beat them back. So, yeah, even though it didn't end out, like we wanted, it was still a great game, and we're proud of how we played. Rob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you very well much. Said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was great. Thank you. And um, Emily Donovan is also, she's a member of the girls' varsity basketball team, our only senior. Uh, she is the captain, and she's also playing in that senior all-star game this evening. Um, but wanted to, uh, for me to include a couple of their highlights. They finished with a 9-9 record um, with a season highlight with a 37-34 win over Lake Region, who they had lost two weeks before, 46-20. to So that was a, a pivotal game for them. It also helped them um, get into the tournament, and that was their first tournament appearance in 15 years. So um, that, was, that was very impressive, and matter of fact, that was... Fifteen years ago, it was Coach Roberts, the head coach, Chris Roberts. That was the final year that they were in the playoffs. So she was a member of that team, and she's now coaching. So. And didn't um, they lose to the team that actually won the state won championship? The state championship, a very good team from Levitt. So mm -hmm. um, they had a terrific season, a lot to be proud of, and uh, we're certainly proud of them. And just real quickly, I would like to um, just thank our, our boosters. Uh, without them, you know, we couldn't do what we do. Uh, our, our coaching staff. Uh, special thank you to um, our, the senior parents for all their time and effort. Um, obviously our students, uh, they've really set the tone, especially the senior class, I think. Right from the fall, um, the fan behavior, uh, the sportsmanship on the field, uh, you name it, has really been uh, instrumental and, and, and just very, very impressive. And uh, we're really proud of them and proud to... Uh, Proud to be a caper, and um, even though people say, what is a caper, we are very proud to be a caper. <laughs> um, and I would like to just um, acknowledge Ben Berman. I think he really, he's really taken a lead on this. Uh, he's a member of the senior class and uh, was really instrumental in gaining, you know, um, just turning up some spirit and uh, getting everyone excited about the playoffs. And one of his things, if you were watching the game, they had the... Um, T-shirts, they had a whiteout, and they had some T-shirts made, and sort of the Superman logo with a super fan, yeah. um, little name on the back. So uh, it was really fun, a lot of fun, and uh, 
again, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to speak for a few minutes. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you for um, being the glue that holds it all together. I think you are a tremendous asset to uh, the athletic community. And um, having followed the basketball team very closely this year, uh, they were tremendous. They played with so much heart. Um, and it was an inspiration to watch them really achieve their full potential. Uh, and very proud of all our student athletes. Um, so thank you all for coming tonight and sharing your stories with us. And we'll look forward to seeing you next season. And if you, for those who need to leave and do homework, like Sam Donnelly. <laughs> <laughs> You may uh, be excused. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, so we will move on to new business. Um, consideration to approve the class of 2011 project graduation committee fundraising efforts in the amount of approximately $20,000. Um, we have to have this approved because we have a school board policy that requires approval of all amounts above $20,000. And um, Dave Sherman is here. He's a member of that group, that committee, and he's generously agreed to give us um, a brief overview um, about the project. Thank you for being here, Dave. Uh, my pleasure. I just want to say that the school board meetings are a lot more fun. You guys have sports, uh, <laughs> anything like that uh, uh, on the town and council. Cupcakes. <laughs> uh, I am here, though, as a member of uh, the organizing committee for this year's project graduation. Just very briefly, uh, project graduation, the goal is to provide a safe and fun way for the members of the graduating senior class to celebrate their accomplishments the evening after the graduation ceremony. The event was actually started in the late 70s as a result of a tragedy or tragedies that occurred in the Oxford Hills region in Maine where seven members of the graduating seniors died in alcohol and drug related uh, accidents. The community there uh, uh, gathered together in the wake of that tragedy and tried to figure out a way for seniors to celebrate graduation in a safe way and a fun way and in a way that would include all members of the senior class and over the years since then uh, project graduation has caught on communities across the, the US um, and Cape Elizabeth is no exception this event has proved to be very popular over the last several years and it's up to the parents of each uh, graduating class to organize the event figure out what they believe their children would enjoy doing from the evening after they graduate through the following morning it's a several hour marathon event and not only organize the event to make it fun, but also figure out a way to fund it. And that's why I'm here tonight. The budget for this year's event is a little over $20,000. Uh, we have been very successful uh, in raising those funds. I guess I don't know what we're going to do if you don't approve uh, this. But uh, uh, parents have been very generous in their donations. We've had a few special events. And I'll also make a plug for uh, buying pizza at Freshies. If you buy pizza at Freshies and mention Project Graduation, they'll donate some of the proceeds to our event, which is very generous of them. Uh, anyway, uh, we're just about there in terms of fundraising. Uh, the people on the committee who've done a lot more work on this, including uh, Reed's uh, mother, Dory Dowdy, they, they spent a, a lot of time. Uh, they asked me to come here tonight. I'm not sure why, but in any event, uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to address them. Are there any questions from the board? Thank you, Dave. It was actually uh, the letter that you put out with the question and answers was extremely helpful. You, even though I was a supporter from the beginning of this project, those questions and um, the email that went out recently was extremely helpful. and. Um, I appreciate it, and I appreciate the work that uh, has gone into this. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Do I have a motion? I have a motion to approve the, let's see if you have the word right there. Um, okay. I motion to uh, approve move. the consider, to move, thank you, to approve the consideration to approve the class of 2011 Project Graduation Committee fundraisers 
fundraising efforts in the amount of um, $20,000 according to the board policy DFR fundraising. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? I think she said 20000 If they raise more, we just to prove them exceeding the 20000 well, appro limit. Approximately 20000 Yeah. Sorry. Yes, I think that covers it. And um, all those in favor? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Uh, thank you. And happy thank you to your committee. Happy birthday. And what Reed didn't mention about the Berkeley uh, Festival is he won an award for his uh, fine play in the, the, the high school band. So congratulations on that award. Congratulations, Reed. Good job, Reed. That name cupcakes. Okay. Um, item B, consideration to approve the following policies for second reading. Kathy. Oh. Yes, um, you have in your packet um, a policy for second reading that was here last month. Um, so I would like to move that we approve policy JRA-E, annual notice of student education records and information rights. It did go back to policy committee and there were no additional changes. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve? I just made the motion. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's Do okay. I have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Um, consideration to approve the following high school athletic extracurricular staff nominations. Um, Excuse me. Um, we have another set of policies for. Oh, questions. I thought you read, but I'm sorry. I lost track. That's okay. C. Item C, consideration of the following policies for first reading. Uh, in your packets, you have uh, policy JKAA and JKAAR. Um, these are formerly JKGA and JKGAR. They are timeout rooms and therapeutic restraint and procedure on timeout rooms and therapeutic restraint. They are here for first reading. They are different than what we currently have in our policy book. They have gone through the policy committee um, and are presented tonight for you um, with the policy committee's uh, approval. If there are any specific questions, I know Dominic is here and I'm sure that he could answer anything specific. Um, otherwise, they'll go back to policy committee for second reading. Any questions? Uh, the only question I had uh, uh, in JKAAR, page four or five, um, and throughout that document, it refers a lot to uh, a type of training, but I, I didn't read anywhere in the procedures, is there a requirement for, for training? Uh, it may fall out of the scope of this uh, document, but I didn't know if, if there was training required. Um, yeah, it's up to each of the school districts, um, and most of the school districts in Cumberland County were moved from positive behavior supports, which was a spur wink, um, a type of training, it's a two-day training, and we went to safety care. And so most of us in Cumberland County are all using safety care. So that, that would fit that piece in the regulation. But they leave that up to the districts to decide which one they want to use. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Item D, consideration to approve the following high school athletic extracurricular staff nominations. I'm not going to read the list to you, but for the benefit of the public, the school board is acting on spring coaching nominations. All right. Um, do I have a motion to approve the slate? Sure. I move that we approve the high school athletic extracurricular staff nominations as presented in our packet. Okay. Second. Michael? Okay, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Seven, zero. Okay. Um, item E, consideration to approve the proposed World Affairs Council trip to the University of North Carolina Model UN Conference, March 31st through April 3rd. Um, do we have any information? Jeff, do you want to give any information on that? I know we had information in our packet, so. 
I don't really have anything to add beyond what's in the packets. Um, Gretchen Minaldi has spotted this uh, particular trip as one that involves minimal um, taking kids away from the school day and also a very reasonable price for what's supposed to be a really high quality experience. Okay. Um, do I have a motion? Go. Kim? Yeah, I'll move to um, approve the Cape Elizabeth World Affairs Council trip. I wish I could go with him. I know. Me too. <laughs> Second? Okay, any other discussion around this? Okay, all those in favor? <coughs> Great, thank you. Um, consideration to approve the mock trial team trip to Phoenix, Arizona, um, and this is for the national mock trial competition, May 4th through May 8th. Um, do I have a, a motion for that? Discussion? I move to approve the mock trial team trip to Phoenix, Arizona National Mock Trial Competition May 4th through 8th, 2011. Okay, do we have a second? Okay. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, thank you. All right, on to item number seven, committee reports. Um, any committee reports? Anything that you, we need to discuss, David? Um, there are some bills pending in the Maine legislature to allow um, one in both the House and the Senate to allow um, schools to conduct open bidding for health care. Uh, there's one. Uh, I've talked, emailed with Cynthia Dill about it, and she suggested we support the one uh, presented by the representative from Falmouth, I believe, which is also the Maine School Board Association bill. It does have some defects in it. Um, I pointed them out, and now I guess I have to point them out to the uh, Falmouth representative. But as it stands, there are two bills, and the, um, it needs some adjustment, but with the adjustment, they'll be, allow us to be in a position a year or so from now to, um, if permitted by our contract, and we, um, we're talking to the teachers about that, um, at some point they'll allow t towns to conduct uh, bidding for our health plan, which, as you know, the report by the town task force believes will subsa save substantial sums of money. Okay. Thank you, David. Anything else that anyone wants to report out on? Okay. Um, the website can always be checked for um, upcoming committee um, meeting dates. Uh, any school board agenda requests for April? Okay. You can always contact Ken or me if you do have something you want to put on the agenda. Um, announcements of upcoming meetings. Uh, we do have, uh, um, we've got workshops coming up Tuesday, March 15th at 7 p.m. at the Community Services Building. That would, um, we'll have a budget meeting actually right after this meeting as well. Um, we'll take a short break after we conclude this meeting and then um, start our budget workshop. And then Tuesday, March 22nd, we will have an additional um, 7 p.m. budget meeting in the high school library. And these are posted on the website for anyone who's interested in attending. Um, and may I have a motion to adjourn our business meeting? So moved. Second? Okay. All those in favor? Great. Okay. And let's take a quick break between um, the um, this meeting and our workshop. Thank you. Yeah. I know. Oh, do you want us to sit?